Please we stand and join the opening hymn found on the front page of the worship aid, Baptized in Water. in water, sealed by the Spirit, cleansed by the blood of Christ our King, as of salvation, trusting His promise, faithful in our God's grace we sing, baptized in in water, sealed by the Spirit, marked with the sign of Christ our King. Born of one Father, we are His children, joyful in our In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Today is a Good Shepherd Sunday. The day it reminds us of our duties as parents, children towards our parents, and parents towards our children. It, the day it reminds us to be a servant leader in our families and also in our communities. In order to celebrate today's sacred mystery wordingly and well, let us call to mind our sin. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that how great is sin. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us everlasting life. Kiri Eliso, Kiri Eliso, Christ Eliso, Christ Eliso, Kiri. Yeah. 
at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, lead us to a sheer in the joy of heaven, so that the humble flock may reach where the brave shepherd has gone before, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and proclaimed, Let the whole house of Israel know for certain that God has made both Lord and Christ this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart, and they asked Peter and the other apostles, What are we to do, my brothers? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promises made to you and to your children and to all those far off, whomever the Lord our God will call, he testified with many other arguments and was exhorting them, save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Those who accepted his message were baptized, and about 3,000 persons were added that day. The word of the Lord. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In verdant pastures he gives me repose. Beside restful waters he leads me. He refreshes my soul. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. He guides me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side with your rod and your staff that give me courage. The Lord my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. You spread the table before me. In the sight of my foes, you anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. 
only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, if you are patient when you suffer for doing what is good, this is a grace before God. For this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his footsteps. He committed no sin, and no deceit was found in his mouth. When he was insulted, he returned no insult. When he suffered, he did not threaten. Instead, he handed himself over to the one who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body upon the cross, so that, free from sin, we might live for the righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed, for you had gone astray like sheep, but you have now returned to the shepherd and the guardian of your souls. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said, Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever does not enter a sheepfold through the gate, but climbs over elsewhere is a thief and a robber, but whoever enters through the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens it for him, and the sheep hear his voice. As the shepherd calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has driven out all his own, he walks ahead of them, and the sheep follow him, because they recognize his voice. But they will not follow a stranger, they will run away from him, because they do not recognize the voice of strangers. Although Jesus used this figure of speech, the Pharisees did not recognize what he was trying to tell them. So Jesus said again, Amen, amen, I say to you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved, and we come in and go out and find pasture. A thief comes only to steal and to slaughter and destroy. I came so that they might have life and have it more abundantly. The Gospel of the Lord. Today is the first Sunday of Easter. We are approaching the Pentecost Sunday. And today, the church, we call today's first Sunday as Good Shepherd Sunday, or the World Day of Vocation, 
Today, the church reminds us of our need to become good shepherds of God's flock and good sheep of his parish. And today, more importantly, the church calls each one of us to pray for vocations, vocation to the priesthood, for the vocation to religious life, and vocation to consecrated life, and vocation to marriage, and vocation to single life. Everybody are aware that I am the, I am the parochial vicar, the assistant parish priest of so many parishes. So I always move around. <laughs> Maybe I will be here on Sunday. The next Sunday I will go to another parish, move around, doing mass. So there is serious need to pray for vocation in our diocese. Today is also a perfect day for me to share my vocation, vocation story. Since I came here three years ago, I have not had the opportunity to share my vocation story. Many people know me, Father Charles, Father Charles, but they don't know my story. <laughs> it is also good for, for everyone to know my story. So today, being a vocation, being the day of prayer for vocation, I want to share my vocational story. I was born and raised in Nigeria. <laughs> I was born and raised in Nigeria, and I have four sisters and two more brothers, and we are seven in number. And my mother passed away in 2017, and my father, he is 88 years old. So I need to go and see him. He's pretty old. So I came out from a family that believes strongly we have our tradition prayer of devotion to the Blessed Sacrament. My parents, they always love adoration. In fact, my father is a kind of person that always go to church. They always like to be at the church, uh, daily mass, Sunday mass. In fact, if he comes to church, everybody will know that he's around. <laughs> He would like to talk, talk, talk to everyone in the bar, you know, to try to greet everyone. He, he has a lot of energy, a lot of energy like me, you know, move around. You know, unlike my mom, my mom is a quiet person. Even sometimes my mom will be dragging my father to sit down, to sit down, it's time for mass. But there is something I, 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 I admire, you know, growing up with them. Whenever they come to mass, I'm the baby in our house, I'm the last born. I always sit in between them, my father this side, my mother this side. They always tell me to focus on the altar, to look at what the priest is doing, and to pay attention. And that time, as I was focusing there for many years, as little as I was, then I decided, I started desiring to become a priest. At the age of 10 years, I told my parents, I want to be a priest. You know, I even then meet the parish priest, you know, as little boy, Father, I want to be a priest. I want to be like you. The parish priest asked me then, why do you want to become priest? I told the parish priest, I want to dress like you. <laughs> I want to wear my collar. I want, to, I want people to call me Father Charles. <laughs> the priest smiled, you know. <laughs> Smile, but he told me one thing, you know, that I can remember that well, it may be a sign that you have a vocation. So, but I continued to disturb my parents that I want to become a priest. Then my parents asked me if I want to start serving mass. I said yes. So, at the age of 10 years to 11 years, I started serving mass at the altar. So, when I start, the time I started, I fall in love with what the priest was doing that time at the altar, I told my parents, I want to go to the seminary. So at the age of 12 years, my parents, they enrolled me in our minor seminary. Here is, we call it high school, but that will be high school seminary. So I left my parents, I left my parents at the age of 12 years to be in the high school seminary. We still have the high school seminary back home in Nigeria, People go there. It's one of the best places you can have a better education. You know, so I started my high school seminary at the age of 12 years old till I became 18 years when I finished my high school seminary. So after my high school seminary, 
they, they will post us in a parish to work with a priest. I had the opportunity to work with the archbishop of my diocese that time. Then after that, the bishop sent me to the seminary for my college and major seminary. So I was there for eight years of my seminary formation till 2015. I started having some doubt, vocation crisis. Are you sure this is where God wants me to be? You know, so I look at it. In fact, I lost interest of my vocation to be priest again because all my life I've been inside the church. Everything I know is about the church. I've been in the seminary. I need to mingle inside the world to know how it looked like, <laughs> to know how it looked like. So I told my parents that I don't want to do this again, although my mother wasn't happy. <laughs> my mother wasn't happy. So my father said, okay, you can do what you want to do. So I left there. I, my father asked me, what do you want to do? I told my father I want to come to America. My father asked me, do you know anybody there in America? I said, no, <laughs> no, I don't know anybody there in America, but I just want to go there. <laughs> so I started, you know, searching inside the internet, looking for admission to come and do my master's. Though good luck for me, I got admission, and I was admitted in Florida, St. Leo in Florida. They gave me admission letter, I went for my visa, you know, I got my visa. I started coming to America without knowing anybody in America, in Florida. It was my professors that picked me from the airport. And there, there wasn't any accommodation for graduate students. They put me in a, in a hotel for a week. My money finished. <laughs> my money finished. So the professor told me, we have a monk house. <laughs> We have a monk house. Why don't you try to see if they will give you accommodation, the monks of St. Benedict? So I'm, I said to the, the professor, I don't want to go to the monk house. I don't want to be a monk, you know. So he said, try. When the monks, when they see me, they look at me, they told me, what is your name? I said, Charles. They said, we don't give students our accommodation. They, they always drink a lot, party a lot. But we, you look like a nice guy, I will give, we will give you accommodation. So the monk of St. Benedict gave me accommodation. So I was with them for two years. So, and one thing I know that I left the seminary, I still loved going to church every time. I was helping the monk of St. Benedict to do things, to do at mass. The monks were telling me, why don't you become priests? Why don't you continue your vocation here in America? I said, no, I don't want to become priest, you know. Until one day, there was a girl there at the, at the monastery that day. We are friends. <laughs> we are friends. I told her, can we have a dinner? She said, sure, Charles, we can have a dinner. So we went for a dinner. At the dinner, I asked her, will you date me? She said, no, I can't date you. You behave like a priest. <laughs> that was my worst day in America. <laughs> so she told me I behaved like a priest. To be honest with you, I was so rude that day. I, have, I left her at the restaurant without paying. <laughs> and without paying. But she paid. The girl always come to my apartment and always asks me, try priesthood, try priesthood, try priesthood. She even told me, Okay, join, try priesthood. If you don't like it, come out. I will marry you. You know, that was it. You know, my morale was up like this. Okay, I said, okay. <laughs> I will try priesthood. I decided to look inside the uh, internet. I saw the Diocese of Albany as the first diocese here in America, you know, alphabetically. I called a priest friend who called the vocation director, then Father Anthony Legato. He invited me. My mind was, Father Anthony, do not accept me. Father Anthony, do not accept me so that this girl will marry me. <laughs> but immediately, Father Anthony saw me. Father Anthony said, you will become a priest. I will accept you. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> Because I don't want you to accept me. I want to go back and marry the girl. <laughs> so, but I started working with faith, trusting in God. 
So they gave me an application. I refused to fill it. Even the girl helped me to fill the application and asked me, child, sign here, child, sign here, child, sign here. <laughs> then I filled in the application and I submitted it. I refused to go when they asked me to come over. The girl encouraged me. The monk of St. Benedict encouraged me. The girl told me, okay, you have to go. We have to make a deal. When you go and stay there for six months, I don't like it. Come out. You know, I will marry you. <laughs> then I, I decided to come here in Albany. The diocese then posted me to St. Mary's in Baltimore. After six months, the girl called me. Charles, do you like the seminar? I said, yes. She said, bye. <laughs> that bad. But the good news about it is, I was ordained in 2020, and I left, to, I left to Nigeria to fix my immigration and came back. So she's married right now, you know, with good man and also with a kid. A way of telling us that sometimes God calls us in one vocation or the other. We may say no, but if God wants us, he will do everything humanly possible to bring you where he wants you to be. You know, I don't want to answer God's vocation upon my life, but God used the only person I love. <laughs> I love to make me to become a priest today. And I am very, very happy, you know, being a priest for three years. Because when the bishop asked me, Charles, why do you want to become a priest? I told him that my happiness today as a priest is because I love God so much and I love the people. Whenever I come to church here and see people around, you know, I'll be full of joy. I'll be full of happiness. And I love to be with people. So today is also a message that we should not, God call us in one vocation or the other. Or maybe we know someone God is calling to become priest. But something may be hindering him or her to answer to become priest or religious life or even to enter into marriage or to live a single life. Something may he, may be, he or she may be afraid. We are called to lead the person to where God wants him or her to be to have a fulfilled life. We are called to encourage the person in that vocation. I went there someone the other time. The person told me that, Father Charles, I can't enter this marriage. I'm so scared to marry this girl. Marriage is not easy. I said, please, it is not easy. <laughs> no life is not easy. Even single life is not easy. We are just making it to work. <laughs> so when you marry, make it to work. When you're in a single life, make it to work. We in our priestly life and religious life, we are making it to work. So it's not easy. So each and every one of us, in our family also, we have a vocation dear to be a leader and also to be a good shepherd towards our children, towards our wife, towards our husband, towards our friends. We are called to use those, our vocation God gave to us in a way that for our own salvation and the salvation of those God has put us to be in charge. My dear brothers and sisters, let us profess our faith. I believe in God.
My dear brothers and sisters, let us bring our prayers and petitions to God with full trust and confidence He will answer us. For Francis, our Pope, Edward, our Bishop, and all the pastors of the Church, that they may listen to the voice of the Good Shepherd, we pray to the Lord. Lord For parents and teachers, that they may be guided by the Holy Spirit and encourage young people to hear and respond to God's call in their lives, we pray to the Lord. For all those searching for their vocation, especially to the priesthood and religious life, that the Holy Spirit may give them the courage and generosity to follow where Christ is leading them. We pray to the Lord. For all who feel distant from the love of God, that they may be gathered into the loving embrace of God through ministry of the church and the powers of the gospel. We pray to the Lord. Lord For all who are lonely, sick, frail, or housebound, that they will feel the touch of God's healing love. We pray to the Lord. Lord we pray for those who have died, may share in the resurrection of Christ, especially Laura McMullen. We pray to the Lord. We pray for those whom this Mass is offered, Joseph, Joseph and Francis Bologna, William Farragon, Rich Gibson, Odette Abreu, Suzanne Mostek, Father Paul E. Engel. We pray to the Lord. Lord Almighty and ever-living God, you have called us your children, confidence to call you Father, Increase your spirit of love within us and bring us to our eternal inheritance. We make our prayers through Christ our Lord.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. We thank God for that. With humble spirit and contrite heart, O Lord, may it be accepted by you. My sacrifice this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God Almighty Father. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that we may always find delight in these Paschal mysteries, so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our ending joy. We make our prayers through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is true, right, and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time, above all, to lad you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defend us and even pledge our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with Paschal joy, every land, every people exult in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the ending hymn of your glory as we proclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. <clears throat> we give you praise, Father most holy. For you are great, and you have fashioned all your works in wisdom and in love. You formed man in your own image and entrusted the whole world to his care, so that in serving you alone, the Creator, he might have dominion over all creatures. And when through disobedience he has lost your friendship, you did not abandon him to the domain of death, for you came in mercy to the earth of all so that those who seek might find you. Time and again you offer them covenant, and through the prophets taught them to look forward to salvation. And you so love the world, Father most holy, that in the fullness of time you sent your only begotten Son to be our Savior, made incarnate by the Holy Spirit, and born of the Virgin Mary. He shared our human nature in all things but sin. To the poor, he proclaimed the good news of salvation and to prisoners, freedom. To the sorrowful of heart, joy. To accomplish your plan, he gave himself up to death. And rising from the dead, he destroyed death and restored life. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose again for us. He sent the Holy Spirit from you, Father, as the first fruit for those who believe. So that bringing to perfection his work in the world, he might sanctify creation to the full. Therefore, O Lord, we pray, may the same Holy Spirit graciously sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. For the celebration of this great mystery, which himself left us as an internal covenant. For when the hour 
have come for him to be glorified by you, Father most holy. Having loved his own who were in this world, he loved them to the end. While they were at supper, he took bread, blessed, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and mm -hmm. eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, taking the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, he gave thanks and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which we pour out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memory of our redemption, we remember Christ's death and his descent into the realm of the dead. We proclaim his resurrection and his ascension to your right hand as we wait his coming in glory. We offer you his body and blood, the sacrifice acceptable to you, which brings salvation to the whole world. Look, O Lord, upon this sacrif sacred sacrifice which yourself have provided for your church and granting your lovingly kindness to all who partake of this one bread and one chalice that gathered into one body by the Holy Spirit, they may truly become a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your glory. Remember, Lord, now for whom we offer this Mass today, especially your servant, Francis, our Pope, Edward, our Bishop, the whole order of bishops, all the clergy, those who take part in this offering, those gathered here before you, your entire people, and all who seek you with sincerity of heart. Remember those for whom we offer this Mass, Joseph, William, Rich, Edith, Suzanne, and Father Paul. We remember also our private intentions, our worries, our fears, our difficulties, our sorrows. And also, we remember all those that ask us to put them in our prayers, those in the hospital, and those we promise to pray for. We remember also those who have died in the peace of your Christ, and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. To all of us, your children, grant, O merciful Father, that we may enter into a heavenly inheritance with the most blessed Virgin Mary, the mother of our Lord Jesus Christ, with Saint Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, glorious martyrs, and all the saints in your kingdom. They are with the whole of creation, free from corruption of sin and death. May we glorify you through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to bestow on us everything that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen.
At the Savior's command and found by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always free from sin and save from all distress as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom be found. Lord Jesus Christ, we say to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us wave to each other the sign of peace. The mingling of this body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Keep me holy for a good deal. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Go back to your seat. <clears throat> the body of Christ. Look beyond the bread you eat. See your Savior and your Lord. Look beyond the cup you drink. See his love poured out as blood. Give us a sign that we might believe in you. Moses had manna from the sky. Look beyond the bread you eat. See your Savior and your Lord. Look beyond the cup you drink. 
is love poured out as blood. I am the bread which from the heavens came. Those who eat this bread will never die. Look beyond the bread you eat. See your Savior and your Lord. Look beyond the cup you drink. See his love poured out as blood. Let us pray. Look upon your flock, kind shepherd, and be pleased to settle in Tana pasture the sheep you have redeemed by your precious blood of your son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. There are two quick announcements. The garage sale that was scheduled for next weekend has been postponed to a later date and the rosary will be prayed a half hour before each weekend mass during the month of May, and we will need volunteers to lead that, and there is a sign-up sheet in the sacristy. Thank you. I know today we are a little bit distracted, you know, but that is why it is called the church. <laughs> that is why it is called the church. It's a place we have fun and get distracted once in a while, you know, by the movement of our brother moving around. So that is why it is the church. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. May God, who by the resurrection of his only begotten Son, was pleased to confirm on us the gift of redemption, of adoption, give you gladness by his blessing. Amen. May he whose redeeming work you have received the gift of everlasting freedom make you heirs to eternal inheritance. And may you who have already risen with Christ in baptism through faith by living in a right manner on this earth be united with him in the homeland of heaven. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Go in peace. The Mass is ended.
Jesus Christ is risen today. Alleluia. A triumphant holy day. Alleluia. Put it once upon the cross. Alleluia.